Greetings! My name is the Smaltzy Cynic, and today we're continuing our playthrough of Silent Hill. Now last time we had gotten through the first half of uh, Midwich Elementary, and we just entered the Otherworld version of it. Now in between episodes I decided to look up just a couple of things about the game, and I'll reference any uh, particular people I looked up for ideas, such as the Gaming Muse. But I kind of wanted to see if there was a little more, well, I guess the best word to say is subtext that I could use for um, this discussion. Because I felt like a lot of the puzzles thus far have been kind of just, uh, well, for lack of a better word, just random. And no real, like, meaning attached to them. As much as uh, I thought there might have been something behind them. What do we have here? Oh, well, this is that uh, painting we saw earlier. Right, okay. But uh, I kind of just want to have more things to talk about in this episode because since this is the first time we actually entered the other world in a full transition. And I also want to see if there was actually any significance or meaning behind the... Uh, some of the puzzles in this game. Now, I can commend that the time stamps on the uh, the puzzles kind of give us some idea of Cheryl's, not Cheryl's, uh, um, Alyssa's uh, school day schedule and the like. That makes sense to me. And uh, I can kind of understand how these events in the first version of the school might relate to uh, the other world events so that's at least a nice touch for that part of the puzzle in game however I kind of feel like a lot of the other puzzles that we've done thus far have been kind of just uh, meandering for example I couldn't really find anything about what the sun and oh not yeah, it was the sun and moon medallions. Like, what were their significance other than just kind of being kind of staples of sorts? Maybe I miss. Maybe I'm. Maybe I haven't looked in the right spot for that information, but uh, it just kind of seems they feel very video gamey, for lack of a better word. Now, where am I? Right, I need to run back to the courtyard. I mean, there was a bit of an interesting thing from the Gaming Muse about alchemy and the like, which kind of involves the puzzle. But I felt like none of that really had a actual, like, actual, like, relevant significance to the actual plot. It more felt like an interesting little side tangent to the plot. Whereas other things in this in this uh, area will have a lot more immediate relevancy. Also, I kind of feel like if there was a actual modern remaster that wasn't Silent Hill Shattered Memories, they could add a little bit more context to the situation. Or at least the visual overhaul would greatly diminish some of the problems with it. Such as uh, that sheet music we read. I did not even notice you could actually read the title, but the title actually says, uh, Don't Trust Anyone Over 30. Which isn't the poem that we read, it's just a song by some Japanese rock band called Moonriders. And I'm guessing it's just mostly be there to like, uh, what's the word? match what uh, Alyssa feels about with the uh, older people. But a lot of this stuff that I had to kind of look up feels like it should have been in the game or maybe it's like in a manual somewhere. Which I wonder how much was intentional or how much was like revision stuff made later. Like uh, what's the one I'm thinking of? Oh right, Cheryl... Um, Cheryl Mason and 
Harry Mason's relationship and the fact that Harry Mason is a non-fiction writer, which I can definitely say that after playing Shattered Memories, um, I can at least see the connection there. But in this game, I don't know. Oh. I thought I needed more keys. Let's see if there's anything in here we can kick. All right. So I guess the reason we're going through this side of the building is that the memories associated with this part of the school are not exactly the most pleasant. Okay, well, nothing in this one. Wait a minute. Oh. Lock me in here. Well, at least that is something. Makes it for all that ammo we wasted in the previous episode. I feel like I'm missing something. Weird. I guess it led to a different part of the map. Oh well. Ooh, what's this? Now this does remind me of the uh first body that we saw in the game at the very way very very at the beginning where the whole body was strewn up like a corpse kind of a, a Jesus allegorical figure there and again it feels the same way here because you can notice the IVs there the uh, the way his arms are stretched out and seeing as this is a good old American Christian school seems like it was intentional Let's see, how much shotgun ammo do we actually have? Six. Okay, well, not a lot. So I'm guessing something happened in the real world in that room, which is why that memory is still there. Okay. Well, I guess now we have to go into the uh, teacher's room, which I imagine is going to be a great time. Oh boy, I bet this is going to be like the best teacher lounge ever. Run. All right, good. Now let's finish him off. Stay down. All right, good. All right. 
So... Anything in these lockers? No. Alright, well before we go in there, let's have our gun at the ready. Just so I don't have to deal with anything. This one seems clearer than the other one. Okay. Well, I guess we'll see if this phone works. Can't use the phone. Well, it was worth a shot. Alright, well, I guess we'll leave. Oh. Cheryl! Now one thing I will say, and I mentioned this before about the whole problem with subtext. I don't think subtext is a problem because for the sake of the story, it's not important. But in terms of understanding Silent Hill and the uh, larger narrative of it, I do think it kind of is a problem over time. And it doesn't help that the first games kind of have a lot of the details hidden with the uh, very low poly polygons and the like. So that's why I kind of want to at least have a better understanding from multiple sources. That way I can actually properly evaluate them and not fall into the same pitfalls as probably most people. Alright, I guess we could open up the hallway. Alright, well, I guess we'll go upstairs. Oh, it must be on the other side of the fence. Okay. Well. Oh, I just realized I went upstairs and that that's what the t bathroom sent me to. Okay. Ah, get off. Ah, come on, Harry. Great. So much for saving our health. Well, at least we made up for we getting this ammo.
Oh, what's this? Shotgun shells? Yes, please. Alright. So we can go out into the hallway. And then maybe head to the music room. Step on it. Step on it. You know, one thing I do have to commend Shattered Memories is that they didn't fall back on this kind of gameplay. I kind of feel like, uh, and this is, you know, separate from Resident Evil, that the combat doesn't really benefit Silent Hill and all that much. If anything, I think it kind of detracts, detracts from the horror. Well, that's just me. Because if I could just knock them down and kick them, it kind of just uh, removes any tension, huh? And I guess what this is supposed to signify is that someone murdered the cat in this room. Alright, well nothing's inside here. Oh. Well, okay then. Oh. Library reserve key. Well, thank you. Well, that was helpful. Wonder who that was. So we can go through this hallway and loop around. All right, sounds like a plan. Oh, it's locked. Never mind. Locked. Locked. Alright, so we got the key. Now we can open the door. What's this? No, I can't use it. Never mind. This is uh, a little disturbing. It's like they're in straight jackets of sorts. What's this? Hearing this, the hunter armed with a bow and arrow said, I will kill the lizard. But upon meeting his opponent, he held back, taunting, Who is afraid of a reptile? At this, the furious lizard hissed, I'll swallow you up in a single bite. Then the huge jaws creatures attacked. Jaws opened wide. This is what the man wanted. Calmly drawing his bow, he shot into the lizard's gaping mouth. Effortlessly, the arrow flew, piercing the maw's defenseless maw, and the lizard fell down dead. Now, this is here for a specific reason, but I won't divulge that just yet. We'll talk about it when we get there. All right, now we can go through this hallway.
Wait, did I go back? Yeah, I did go back. Never mind. Yeah, I meant to check that door. My bad. Well... Let's see. I can't enter that classroom. Can't enter that way. So... How do I get to that side of the building? I guess we can see if we go to the roof. It's the only thing I got left as an option. All right. Because otherwise we need to somehow get through this area. Yeah, I can go up, so I can at least go to the roof. Now before we couldn't open it. But now we can. Okay. Oh, what's this? There's a drainage valve. Nothing unusual. Okay. There's a hanging key just out of reach. Well, I guess we need to use that valve now. Yes. Maybe I should plug it up somehow. I guess this is where the rubber ball comes into play? Kinda weird, but alright. So, I must ask for the uh, lore enthusiasts, what's the significance of the rubber ball? <laughs> is it is it supposed to be like uh, like a ball gag or something? <laughs> like that's the only thing I can think of. What am I doing with it? Clogging up this thing from you know uh, spilling out. <laughs> Good lord, this is gonna be this is gonna be taken way out of context. <laughs> All right, so now we can get the stupid key, right? Oh. Well, if we went down the drain, then it should be in one of the bathrooms, right? Now, I do believe we missed something in that boys' restroom in the first one. So let's just double check it. Yeah, we missed the writing on the wall. Leonard Rhine, the monster lurks. Now, I imagine this is supposed to be Leonard Ryan, perhaps? And the monster is the one we read in that uh, fairy tale we read. And if you remember in the boiler room, we did hear a, quite a disturbing sound. Which is where we're going to actually meet the thing. So maybe the whole point of that is that it kind of is what the association came from and where the idea for the monster arrived, possibly. Or it could just be a neat little environmental touch to kind of associate the player with where you're supposed to meet the actual threat. Well, where's the key? I could have sworn the key was supposed to be in this room. Maybe in the courtyard? Well, let's check. We can't at least save our progress, so 
you know, we get somewhere. I don't see a key. Thought maybe there might have been a gutter drain here or something. No. Okay, it is supposed to be out there. I thought so. Because I figured if it's not in the bathrooms, then it has to be some sort of drainage pipe. I guess I'm supposed to look a little bit harder. That's a tree. That's the clock tower. Another tree. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I wondered how I wonder why I missed that, huh? Okay, well now I got a classroom key. I imagine I can use it to get over to the uh basement area. I keep forgetting there's a whole light mechanic where you can turn off the lights so they can't see you. I've not yet felt the need to do that yet. At least not while I have a mighty boot to just kick them down. I imagine we have about like 20 or so shotgun ammo. Yeah, 18. Okay, so let's definitely not waste it. Now, it should be either this room or the next room. Wow, that's a lot of them. I think we're saving up all that pistol ammo, huh? Now let's see. We're on this side of the classroom, so now we just need to go out from the hallway and go downstairs. Sounds like a plan. need to deal with them. Huh. Oh, I guess I can head back to the infirmary and save. Now, I wonder if there's actual significance to the nurse room and uh, the feeling of safety that the game is trying to instill. Maybe. Not too bad for a actual first level of the game, huh? Oh, more of these straight jacket monster things. Okay. Let's see. Which one's the boiler room? Okay, so let's check the storage area first. Maybe there's something new in there. Oh, good. Shotgun ammo, my favorite. Ample? I don't know what that is. What is this ample we found? Relieve pain to recover stamina too high. Okay, so it's a buff of sorts? Oh, one of these puzzles, huh? Okay. I know how to deal with these kind of puzzles. Twice. Now, I do feel like because the game is really short for, you know, standards of this game 
that a lot of these puzzles are here mainly to just kind of uh, pad out the experience so that we don't have to, uh, you know, make too many combat sequences and too many uh, things to distract the player. But oh well. Wasn't too bad. And now we actually go to the first fight. Now, we'll talk about the significance of that body in the fire much later, but if you remember that uh, fairy, fairy tale we read about, now we're going to use that knowledge and practice. So remember, we can do a quick turn like this, which will come quite in handy with this boss. Come on, open your big mouth. Ow. Ow. Come on. You're a real pain. Well, maybe I can bait him by shooting him a bit. Hold on. Alright. Maybe that will get him to start opening his mouth. pain. Open up that mouth. How are we doing on health? Okay, we are taking a little bit of damage, but not as much as I feared. Alright, let's start shooting him. Oh, there he goes. open his mouth again. Oh. He's dead? Well, that didn't take long. Well, we'll talk about that uh, burning body in a little bit. Right now we have a cutscene. So yeah, just to even drive the uh, point further about the uh, association with the boiler room, they send you right back here to kind of uh, make the connections yourself. Now what do we pick up here? K. Gordon's key. Oh, must be for the house. Got it. So yeah, this level overall is a nice touch. It kind of gives you to the general gist of the overworld and what it involves. And exactly how it affects the uh, reality as we know it. But now that we hear a church bell, we should need to go investigate it. So we gotta go all the way to the other side. Now, is there anything in this building that we haven't explored? Yeah, because we can't go up there. 
So, no. I think we're done in this area. So let's head to the infirmary and save our game. I do have to give this game credit because there's a lot of uh, Judeo-Christian themes and messages intertwined with the message of the game. It is pretty b ballsy of them to do that given, uh, you know, whenever this game came out in the 90s. So, and it's before, you know, it became kind of cool to uh, diss on Christianity and the like. <laughs> I mean, I grew up in the 2000s, so I get to say that. I remember how YouTube was way back then. Not saying they're immune to criticism, but I'm just saying it was pretty, you know, uh, a matter of habit at that point. So if you remember from last time, the uh, street from Bradbury is out. So we need to find another way to get across there. Now that we have the key, we can go into this alley. And there should be another similar house. Okay, Gordon, here it is. Now, why exactly are these keys being left for us? I don't know yet. But now we can cut through another house just like before. Starting to think I should have played it on hard, but uh, <laughs> too late for that now, I guess. Anything over here? Let's see. Nope. Right, so I don't think there's really anything in this side of the building or any, anything on this side of the town to really explore. But you never know. We'll keep our eyes open. Let's see. We're over here. So we can explore down Bradbury Street. Maybe loop around the gas station, head to the church. All right, sounds like a plan. Although there's also something up there, so we may cut through the alleyway. We'll see. Sure, there are some secrets and the like, or goodies. Now you notice when the church bell rang, it seemed to kind of like cleanse the area. Hint, hint. So it's not exactly all... <laughs> All bad for the uh, Judeo-Christian themes in this game, huh? Alright, nothing here. Well, what's it, which way are we going? Right, we have to cut through here. Okay, so there's no avoiding it. Come on, get it. my eyes out for anything. I do wonder how much ammo people usually spend on uh, these sections or how many enemies they actually kill. And maybe that's why they give you such a surplus amount of ammo. 
for those kind of people. All right. So if we don't, let's see if we can go past the church without having to go inside. Nothing here. Nothing here. Nope. here either. Well, I guess you can see if you go to the gas station. Well, actually, we're going to go that way anyway, right? So I guess we can just go inside the church. If we can find it. Yeah, it should be right in front of it. Alright, well, see what's happening at the church. Probably nothing important. Were you ringing that bell? I've been expecting you. It was foretold by gyromancy. What are you talking about? I knew you'd come. You want the girl, right? The girl? You're talking about Cheryl. I see everything. You know something. Tell me. Stay back. Nothing is to be gained from floundering about at random. You must follow the path. The path of the hermit concealed by Flowros. What? What are you talking about? Here, the Flowros, a cage of peace. It can break through the walls of darkness and counteract the wrath of the underworld. These will help you. Make haste to the hospital before it's too late. Wait, don't go yet. Well, that was enlightening. Now, there's a couple things to piece from that exchange. Number one, um, gyromancy is basically this kind of like divination practice through uh, spinning in circles and the like, which remember from the courtyard, there was a giant huge circle on the ground. So that's kind of what it's referring to. Two, when he, she mentions the, uh, <laughs> nothing special about it, the picture of Jesus on the wall, huh? I'm sure there is nothing special. But, uh, as I was saying, um, those circles are kind of the, uh, rites or passages of the cult and how they kind of influence the other world and how they get in and out of this world. So that's one thing. The other thing is when she mentions the path of a hermit, well, that's kind of the only in-game reference we get to Harry's life as a writer, a nonfiction writer to be exact. So I guess it's kind of there. I imagine there's like a more of a better explanation inside the textual or sorry, the uh, manual. Cause you know, games like this usually had them and they kind of front load the storytelling or the uh, important details in there. And there's Floros. I'm not exactly sure what it is at the moment, but uh something to kind of ward off the other world and of course there's a Bible because symbolism and she won't let us follow her of course so we don't know who this crazy lady is but she seems to be helping us out somewhat 
So now you head to the hospital. And the hospital is where? Alright, where is the hospital, Harry? Well, it must not be on this side of the, the uh, town. So I guess we cross the bridge. Okay. Let's head to the gas station and head around and see if there's anything down there. And then we'll keep going. I really hope that squeaky toy isn't making a sound downstairs. I know, random thing to comment at the moment, but uh, it's pretty loud and obnoxious. Oh, it looks like something I can go into. Alright, what do we got at the gas station? There's a TV set. Seems strange to give me a save point here, but oh well. We're in the garage. <laughs> Sorry for you Americans, garage. <laughs> Seriously, what is up with you Brits and calling it a garage? You say garbage, right? English language is full of full of inconsistencies like that. I'm just taking I'm just having fun with it. Shout dog. Ah, darn you. Nope, can't go in there. Can't go in there. Might be something over there. Alright, we'll see. Wait, was there something on the ground? No. Okay, let's see if there's anything by that truck. Doubt it, but you never know. Oh, there was. I don't know if it's because the areas are much more open or. The camera angles are much more far away, but I find it much easier to dodge enemies in this game than in the likes of Resident Evil, if we're just talking about the first game. I think it's mostly the open environment. Right. So we cleared the gas station, we cleared the church, cleared everything up to here. There may be something north of this, maybe on the other side of that broken uh, street. But otherwise, we're ready to cross the bridge. Not seeing anything. All right, so let's cross the bridge and head to the other part of Silent Hill. Maybe something in this building here. Oh, didn't realize I had my light off. Okay, so I need gas. Wait, is that why I have to go to the gas station? So I do need to lower the bridge. Maybe there's some gas up here. Did I receive a key from the church? I don't remember getting a key. Maybe that's a problem. Oh, right. I keep forgetting. This isn't Resident Evil, the modern ones, where you can just press the item and it does it for you. Silly me. All right. Now let's do this right this time. Uh, yeah. 
yeah, I do. <sighs> Sorry, I'm still waking up. Now, we should have the drawbridge down, and then we can go to the old Silent Hill. See where we are. Um, I guess we head to the police station first. Then we can loop around, check the post office, and then head to the hospital. All right, sounds like a plan. Now you probably notice a lot of these street names have a lot of uh, horror fiction authors and the like, and some science fiction authors too. Probably intentional. We have it down here. Okay, well, that's a dead end. Okay, that's locked. Whoa, what the hell are you? Get off me. Oh wow, you're fast. Wow. All right, I'm probably almost dead, aren't I? Yes, we are almost dead. Okay, so do not mess around with those big gorilla ones. Alright. Then let's just cut down here and go to the hospital for my sake. Go away. Is that Konami Burger? <laughs> oh, that sounds appetizing, don't you think? You could make probably some sweatshop joke or something like that. <laughs> but I'm not. That'd be a little too mean-spirited, don't you think? Then again, we're talking about Konami here, so uh, all bets are off on being nice. What's that? What do we have up here? Well, okay then. I just sworn there was a reason to go up here. Maybe we have to come here for later or something. Oh, there's a door. Hold on. Nope. Alright, we must have to come here later. Because otherwise this is way too unique to be just a random area. Now I'm thinking, well, we'll see how long the footage is. But I think the hospital would be a good place to stop for today.
I don't see anything here. No, I don't see any items. All right, we'll just run inside. Oh, there might have been some unique item in there, but oh well. All right. We'll see how long this footage is and maybe if this is a good place to stop. An hour or so? Okay. Well, I'll take a break for right now, but we'll come back and continue this. All right, we're back. Wait a minute, where's my flashlight? Weird. I guess technically I don't need it. All right. The hell was that? Is that a pistol? Um, we need to get to that map over there, so I guess we'll keep going. I figured uh, the format we've done with this episode is kind of what I want to do for the rest of this series or rest of this one. We we explored the area our first time around in the normal world, and then examine in more detail when we come back into the other world. Seems like a suitable format for discussing it. I think it came from this room. Hold it! <gasps> Stop! Don't shoot! Wait! I'm not here to fight. My name is Harry Mason. I'm in town on vacation. Thank God. Another human being. Do you work here? I'm Dr. Michael Kaufman. I work at this hospital. So maybe you can tell me what's going on. I really can't say. I was taking a nap in the staff room. When I woke up, it was like this. Everyone seems to have disappeared. And it's snowing out, this time of year. Something's gone seriously wrong. Did you see those monsters? Have you ever seen such aberrations? Ever even heard of such things? You and I both know creatures like that don't exist. Yeah. Have you seen a little girl anywhere? I'm looking for my daughter. She's only seven. Short, black hair. She's missing. I'm sorry. But with all those monsters around, I highly doubt that she's... Sorry, I didn't mean to alarm you. Your wife, she's here with you? She died four years ago. Now it's just me and my daughter. I see. I'm sorry. Well, I'd better be going. I can't just sit around here doing nothing. So long. Good luck out there. All right, well, interesting character that we have here. Now, Dr. Kaufman is gonna be kind of important later on when we do his side quest, which is one of the few things to do in this game that will impact the ending. But uh, we'll get to it in a bit eventually. At least now we know a little bit more about Harry Mason and his uh, family. Although again, not as much details as we'll, we'll, later, we'll learn later on. Now, if we go over here, we should have the map. Uh, newspaper. The article's been clipped out. Oh. 
Okay then. Whiteboard, nothing special. Wait a minute. I think I went the wrong way. I think this is where I'm supposed to go. Say the phone was cut? No, it just says it's out. Never mind. Alright, so now we have a map of this area. So we've been into the reception, the office, the examination room, the medicine room, and now we can go into the actual hospital. Alright. We'll loop around and then we'll head back and save our progress. I need to get to the stairwell in order to unlock that. Got it. All right, let's go in the doctor's office. What's this? Why is the base of the map so different? That's weird. Wouldn't it just be part of the normal map? Strange. So we got the kitchen, the director's office, and then we go downstairs. Although there's an entrance over there. Maybe it that loops back around. So that does go outside, so uh, we'll have to be careful. Plastic bottle, huh? Okay. Doctor did it. Oh, what do we have here? A glass vial lies shattered. It's not just broken, it looks like it was smashed on purpose. Okay, well 
that leads to the basement, so we don't want to go there quite yet. So I guess we can loop around now? Oh, never mind. Alright, so now we go back down into the uh, unknown. This seems like a great idea, Harry. Oh wow, that's a lot of them. We're doing fine. How are we doing on ammo? Plenty. Locked. Oh, I had to. That's that's interesting. I didn't know that. You actually have to have your light on in order to uh, use the map. That makes sense. generator powers elevators ICUs and operating rooms only yes Go to the second floor. So we'll go around, and hopefully get through the nurse center, and then get to the stairwell. Sounds like a plan. So we're going upstairs. Right, so now what do we do? Oh, it's locked too. Then how do I get out of here? Check the examination room, that's going to be the only option I have left. Wait, the fourth floor. We can check there. I guess it would make sense to start from the top and work your way down. different. So again, neat little transition there to kind of mask how uh, how this thing works. Yeah, so even though we, uh, we 
just locked in it. Great. Now you notice there wasn't a fourth, I don't think there was a fourth floor in the actual map, so uh, this place shouldn't exist. Let's go here. Now we're in the actual real part of this building. So let's check these rooms. steel plate it is screwed to the wall all right well we need some screwdriver then Are we into the recording right now? Let me check. Well, it's technically an hour and a half. And I did say I was going to plan uh, stopping at this part of the game. So maybe this is the best place to stop. Yeah, let's just do that. So, tune in next time where we complete the rest of this uh, Acamelia Hospital. I guess like alchemy, so Alchemelia. Yeah, Alchemelia Hospital. Okay, so tune in next time when we complete this hospital. And if you like some more survival horror content, I have plenty available on my channel and plenty more in the future. So catch you later.